Well, let's talk about water filtration. Um, the different kinds of filters, and I want to cover a little bit about what you want to look for because there's pros and cons to these different filters. Probably one of the best filters is also referred to as GAC, granular activated carbon. And so what this is, is it's a, is it's a if it's a solid, it's a solid medium uh, of at granular, granular carbon that, that has a large surface area that can pull contaminants out of your water. It's really effective at getting the chlorine and some of the other contaminants out of the water. Now what this kind of filter won't do very well is it won't pull metal. Okay, and it won't pull fluoride. So if, you know, I had somebody, actually a couple people last week that were coming to see me, we, we routinely test fluoride uh, in, in, in individuals to make sure they're not being overexposed to fluoride who were actually fluoride, fluoride toxic. And they were filtering their water with this, right? They were using GAC and they, they again, it doesn't pull fluoride out. Really, uh, not many filters pull fluoride very effectively. Now. There's a popular company that makes a fluoride adapter for their filter, and, and I have seen time and time again um, patients that come to see me even using that type of fluoride adapter piece still coming back fluoride contaminated. The absolute best way to get fluoride out of the water is reverse osmosis. So if you want fluoride out, RO is the way to go. Now, KDF, kinetic degradation filters, or fluxion is what that stands for, kinetic degradation fluxion. It's a type of filter oftentimes abbreviated as KDF. This is a zinc and copper granular filter, and it will pull some fluoride. It will pull some fluoride, but it's just not efficient or super effective. So you'll get some pull, but not great pull with that KDF style of filter. So, you know, what a lot of people do is, is they call a water company to come out and install a whole house water filter. Whole house water filters are usually a combination of these two. You get some GAC, you get kinetic degradation on there, and that's a pretty good setup. If you have both of these in place, and you, you know, one of the other things you can add is a carbon block, uh, what's known as a 0.5 micron carbon block filter. These are good filters as well. When you combine this with these two on your whole house system, that's a really solid filter, but where you're gonna be under or overexposed potentially is pulling metal, particularly pulling that fluoride out of the water. And this is where RO comes in. Now, generally speaking, RO filters are really expensive to do the whole house. Um, you know, priced somewhere in that you know, 10 plus, sometimes even up to 20,000. Again, pretty expensive type of system for the whole house. But where these work really good is if you have this type of filter in place for your whole house and you have an RO under your sink in your kitchen for your drinking water and for your, uh, for your cooking water, right? And so you can get an undermount sink RO filter for in the $500 range. So they're not overly expensive and they last a really long time. So, you know, you, you know, if you're buying bottled water to drink out of, it's something else we're going to talk about here in just a minute. You don't want to do that. You don't want to buy bottled water to drink out of. Actually, let's, let's just go ahead and talk about it. If you're buying bottled water, you're like, I don't need to filter. Here's a problem with bottled water. Most bottled water companies, when you actually analyze the water, it's no better than tap. Now that's not true for everyone, but um, a lot of your cheap brands, your store brands and things of that nature, um, some of them actually are tap water. They actually take the water. I know there's one particular company that actually, on their bottle it says, water comes from the Cincinnati uh, water system, meaning they're just basically pouring tap water from the city of Cincinnati into plastic water bottles and they're selling that as a healthier alternative for drinking. So a lot of your bottled waters are no better than tap. And so I don't really recommend them. Um, but the other issue is if, if they come in plastic, I don't care if it's BPA free, even BPA free still contains phthalates. Remember, BPA is one kind of phthalate. There's a lot of different types of phthalates. And the problem with plastics 
is they leach. We get microplastics. And we're actually, we can measure these things. And we're seeing a lot of this stuff showing up in people. We know that these microplastics do a couple of different things. One, they suppress the immune system. So they reduce immune system function. They also act as estrogens. They're chemical estrogens. So guys, if you want gynecomastia, a great way to help develop that is drink a lot of plastic, drink out of a lot of plastic water bottles. Ladies, if you want estrogen dominance, increase your risk for estrogen-related conditions and diseases, drink out of plastic water bottles, even the ones that say BPA-free. You shouldn't be drinking out of plastic. You should be drinking out of glass uh, or stainless steel made not in China or not in India. You want to buy from you know European or from US because they don't, generally speaking in those countries, they're not cutting corners for safety. You get a better quality. You don't get contaminants and leaching in those types of bottles. So again, I don't recommend drinking out of plastic. This is where you want these filters set up and you want them in place because this is the really truly the only way you can protect your body from, from the exposure. Again, now some people will buy bottled water and there's some brands that come in glass. So bottled in glass, that's fine, right? So if you wanna buy bottled water, there's some companies that are, that are spring waters, so, uh, you know, several different brands that, that do glass bottling, that would be okay, that would be an option. Some of them actually will deliver you know, the big five gallon jugs to your doorstep for all your drinking and cooking. But I still recommend you do this, and one of the reasons why is when you shower or when you bathe, Remember, your skin absorbs the chemicals from the water into your body. When you shower, you absorb those chemicals, but you also inhale the steam from the shower water. And so those chemicals can end up inside your body. So again, if you're trying to protect yourself you know, from the modern world as best as you can, you know, remember, use filters so your body doesn't have to be the filter. Remember, the, the dirtier your body's filter gets, the sicker you can get. So be very, very cautious around your water. Again, I recommend GAC, KDF, plus carbon block on the whole house. Okay, it's, this is especially if you live in the city, and then an RO filter to pull that fluoride out, because again, the only thing that's gonna, um, the only thing that's gonna pull that fluoride out effectively is RO. I've seen this time and time again. I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of tests I've seen where people were filtering their water, but were still fluoride toxic. And, and these were people that weren't using fluoridated toothpaste and weren't being exposed to fluoride other than in the drinking water. Their filters that were claiming to pull fluoride out were just not doing the job effectively. So filtration becomes very critical, becomes very important. Okay, now if you're using RO, let's talk about electrolyte because one of the, one of the issues, when I say RO, I'm referring to reverse osmosis, right? RO. One of the issues is it pulls minerals out of your water. And these, many of these minerals are electrolytes. And of course, one of the factors in hydration is electrolyte, right? So it's potassium, chloride, sodium, uh, magnesium, calcium are all part of the electrolyte family. And so when you're pulling those things out, you wanna add them back in, okay? So if you're using RO water, it's good to have an electrolyte supplement to add them back in. One of the one of my favorites is, is ultra electrolytes. It's what I add back in because I, you know, my, in my office I have an RO filter. So like what I'm drinking out here, this is stainless steel produced in Switzerland. It's contaminant free. And so I use an RO filter within my office and I add for every 20 ounces, you add about a half a teaspoon of ultra electrolytes back into the water so that you can get, again, get those minerals back in. Because a lot of times if you drink RO water all the time, and you're exercising regularly, trying to take care of yourself, one of the symptoms that we'll see develop in people that are electrolyte depleted is muscle spasm. So we'll start to see cramping occur. We'll start to see things like eyelid twitching or, or generalized muscle spasms or muscle cramps or muscle tightness. It's one of the earlier signs of electrolyte depletion. And so you wanna make sure you're getting those electrolytes back in to your water if you're filtering with RO. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.